how to use the column graph tool in Illustrator. Now, here's an example of a column graph. Now, I've actually added various effects and strokes, etc. You can actually use a very basic if you want. You don't have to add all those sort of things. You can create a very, very simple one via the column graph tool. And you can find that in the toolbar. Now, you can define the actual size of the column, column graph, just by just dragging and releasing. Now, you can actually see the data set appear as well. Now, I don't want it at this point, so I'm just going to remove that. Don't save that. You can also make a very small column graph just by dragging and then releasing a very tiny one there. Now, you can, of course, manipulate it later as well. Once you've actually created it, what you can do, you can just drag it and use the scale tool to actually resize it. It's up to you. Now, you can see I'm just using the artboard. You can also change the font via the typeface. So if you're not happy with the font on the, for the values on the, side, on the left side, what you can do, you can just run through your typefaces and just set, decide on one. Once you're happy with that, you can see the typeface. And you can change that at any point. So if you're unhappy with that, you can change it later. Now, once you've actually got the column graph up, you get this data set here. And I'm just going to enter it along the, the top. I'm not going to make anything very sophisticated in terms of graphs. So I'm just going to enter a couple of values, click on each of the cells. That's the key thing. Just click on the cell, enter a value, click on the next cell, click on that next cell and enter a value. And then once you're happy with all that, you can just click OK. Click that little tick mark at the end there, just there. But you can also change various settings as well. So if you want to change various and transpose things, you can also use change settings. So I'm just going to change settings. And that's like for the visual for the data set itself. So you can actually say number of decimals appear and you can see that. It's not particularly great, but of course, if you're entering data that's 10.3.3, you know, et cetera, et cetera, it might be better. And you also you can modify the actual width of those the data set as well. It's not draggable. Right, click OK and click the tick mark to apply the data. That's the key thing. So you've got the data there and now it will apply. You actually see the graph that you've been entering all those values for. And you can click there and remove the actual data set entry there. Like I say, you can go back there, column dot graph data, and you can also change the data set at any point. Quick, easy way of doing that. Object and graph and data. Just select that. That selected, what you can do then is you can just re-enter the values. You can enter two, five, six, click on the actual cell that you want to edit, and then once you're happy, click the there at the end. And again, click on another one, enter another value, click on the apply. It's a bit of a slow way of doing it. It's a pity it's not interactive, but for some weird reason it's not. You can remove it, obviously, the data set again, once you're happy with that. You can also use the scale tool. You can also use rotate and shear and all those sort of things to transform the design. So you can just say scale the actual data set. I'm going to go for shear tool now. So you can see you can shear that. You can also rotate it as well. And then you can do that via, say, like the object menu as well. So you can go to the object, transform and rotate. Enter a value like 45, click OK. And you can see the design there just rotated okay now you can also add appearances to that column graph so you don't have to keep it just very basic gray what you can do just go to window and appearance and then you can actually change the the actual color so you can and add strokes as well so i'm just adding a stroke there and you can change that say like to four whatever you can see the stroke around the actual also, unfortunately, around the actual data values there. You can also have beautiful strokes. You can also add brush strokes as well. And you can change those at any point. So you decide you don't want that brush stroke, you can change it. Also, brush strokes can be made up of many different things. So you can actually add all kinds of different brush strokes there. You can also add a new fill. You can see there the new fill is black. You can change it to green and you can make, the, obviously, the column graph now is green. But you can also change the opacity as well. So you, as well as the blending mode, by the opacity field there. So you can actually change that, say, to 50. So you can actually see the different browns as well. And, of course, you can add multiple fills. You can add multiple strokes as well. So make very complex design. You can also add effects to the fills and strokes. So just go to 
Now, in this case, I'm just going to add a warp via the effect menu. And I was actually selecting, in, in the appearance panel, you can actually see I was actually selecting the fill. And that warp is applied to the fill only. It's not added to the stroke. So it makes, creates a nice little weird sort of shadowy effect. But if you select the stroke, and then you go to effect, and again down to warp and arc, then what happens is the actual arc apply, is applied to the stroke, and you actually see that lovely outline of the uh, column graph applied. The rest of it is remaining as before. Now, you can actually go and edit the data. So you can just go again object, graph, and then data, enter the values, and it's still live. So you can just change the values, go through it, click there, change the values all the time. If you want to add it to the whole thing, now, best way to do that, just quickly, I'm just going to remove that now, is to go and click the graph in the appearance. Select that and then go to effect, warp and arc. And again, you can see then the whole thing has been changed, the stroke and the fill. Now you can modify the values, you can bend, vertical, etc. Up to you what you want. There's of course a number of other warp available as well. So you can see just there. You can also apply other effects. So you could add maybe a Gaussian blur, maybe 3D, etc., etc. You can also change the type. So you can do that via the object and then graph and then type. Now there's other settings as well, which I'm not actually going to show in this, but there's also various things. You can maybe make the whole thing like full of stars or, or dots, etc. Now in this case, I've just turned it into a pie chart. I don't particularly like that, especially with the warp. It doesn't look very good but you can change it quickly back to the column as well. And you can see the column graph there. And again, you can change the type, just go. But not only that, you can also change the column width. You can also change the cluster width as well. Column width is the actual column. So you can actually make that instead of 80 or whatever, you can make it like 40 or make it very thin by entering it down to like 20%, etc. What also you can do is the cluster width so you can also add a drop shadow as well. That's another thing. You've got a drop shadow. You can add the, change the cluster width. So what that does, it clusters them all, puts them all together. So you can make, reduce that down. So maybe make that like 40 or 20 or something. And it will crunch them all into that center. Click OK. And you can see then you've got the design, all, which is quite a nice effect as well. So you can change the graph in that way. Now I'm putting the values a bit higher than that. And also you can change the various things for the value axis as well. So you can modify the, the range. So you've got here 0 to 10. You can enter like 20 or something, so 20 or 30. Enter a larger value. Once you do that, click OK. And what happens then, you can see obviously the chart goes off up to 30. And you can see obviously the values are still down low at 10. It's up to you what you want to do for, the, for that. You can put it back down to 10 again. You can also change various things such as tick marks as well, as well as the label. So you can add prefix as well to the label. So if you want to put some, some word in front of those labels, you can there, prefix. So you can actually see type is in front of it and then space. Key thing is always add a space at the end. Otherwise, what happens, it will be like type and then four, type two. It's up to you, of course, but you might want a space between those. You can also change the category axis. Again, you can add tick marks. You see the tick marks there. Or maybe not in this case, but the tick marks appear or not. Right. Again, these are live, so you can actually change the type very quickly. You can run through all the different types. Myriad, if you want to go with that. You can also change the colour very easy. It's all still live, so you can actually go and change it at any point. So you can maybe make it one blue. And that's it. I hope you found this of interest. Actually, there's a lot more to do with the con graph, but I might do that in another video. I hope you found this of interest. Please subscribe. Always adding new tutorials. And also, please put a comment or suggestion. That would be really great as well. Thank you much.